Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Thursday stream. Where we do a little bit of whatever I want. And uh, today we are going to play some Monster Prom for Spooky Season, but everything looks different. Everything sounds different. Why is that? Karen, what is this right here? What's going on? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> well, we very unexpectedly reached over 300 followers. And I told you guys that when we reached 300 followers, we would do a slime stream. Now, I'm not ready to do like the full slime stream yet, but I wanted to say a big thank you. Um, so we're going to do a little ASMR slime introduction. So slime introduction today, instead of a personality quiz, we're going to do a little slime stuff. Kind of, kind of test this out, going to test the waters. Now, how did we get to the 300 followers? Well, I joined a raid train. It's not taking place until January, so it's still getting planned and all of that. So it's quite a ways away. Um, so we'll talk about that more later. Hey, Koneko, welcome, welcome. Um, but it was organized by Shady Joker. So let me do like just a quick shout out for him. There we go. If you, um, did I do that? Do his right name? I think I did. Just checking. I'm just checking right now. See if I spelled his name right. I think it's just the Shady Joker. Okay. Yes, that's right. So he organized this raid train. And, uh, you know, I didn't expect those guys to follow me because they were like, you know, it's a bunch of streamers. Some of them I've interacted with, but most of them I haven't. Well, um, a whole, whole bunch of them uh, went and followed me after I posted an introduction. So I was... I was uh, very pleasantly surprised at that. So thank you very much to Shady Joker for organizing that raid train and uh, basically pushing me over the 300 followers. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, because of that, we're going to do a little bit of slime today. So I'm just going to show you guys what I have. Uh, now we are still having our um, Magic Spoon sponsorship. Okay. So that is still a thing. We will still be doing that today, but we're just going to do slime first. I've got some lychee tea, tea here. It's um, it's very cold. <laughs> it got cold yesterday and today here, so I've got I've got some warm tea. Okay, all right, you guys. Okay, so you can see my desk here, and here's a couple of things that I did. So these are um, big girl slime recipes. So big update since we did slime like. Oh gosh, I think two Christmases ago now. I made this as a test. Now this is just some very basic um slime that is uh glue and some borax and water i did make an activator solution when we do the real slime stream i'll explain a lot more about this um, but i did make it and then what i did is i bought some actually like popular slime okay this is snoop slimes berries and cream mixed berry and because i wanted to see if i was like getting anything close to what the people that are actually popular are doing. So that's what we've got here that we're going to play with today. I've never had lychee tea, but I had an apple lime tea. Oh, apple lime sounds delicious, Koneko. Okay. So we're going to play with the, the fancy slime first. Now it came with a little care kit. So what to do if your slime is sticky, what to do if your slime is stiff, um, making your own activator. So it did come with a little bit of borax. So you could make an, some activator. Okay. Um, it also came with this this cute little sticker here. And then um, down at the bottom, it's talking about what's in the slime. And it says that you should wash your hands with cold water before playing with the slime. So, so I did that. So I made sure my hands are very, very clean. I washed them and I didn't put on any lotion after, even though that was very painful with the cold weather. But that being said, we're going to, we're going to play with this slime right here. Okay. This is brand, this is brand new. Okay. Oh, I can smell it from here. Okay. It has this really beautiful berry scent. So let's, let's move the microphone a little bit so you guys can hear the slime itself. still on. 
Move out of the way, zoom things. <laughs> You're ruining my stream zoom. Stop it. Stop it. There we go. Okay. The slime is like very soft. It's very soft and squishy. We're going to assemble it. It also comes with this clear slime right here. Let's see if it has the smell. It also smells like berries. Okay. So, and it comes with some little like plastic and, uh, and confetti things. So let's assemble. That actually looks like perfect slime. I don't like slime textures usually. Yes, I uh, I am very, very impressed. I'm very impressed with this slime. It uh, it feels absolutely amazing. I, I hope I can achieve something similar. I know the one that I have right now does not achieve that, but I've got some ideas on maybe what they did. So we're just going to sprinkle those on top. And we've got some beautiful little raspberries. We go and then we've got some berry jelly drizzle. Oh, this clear one is so firm. Oh, you hear that good bubble pop? Okay, very sturdy. Yes, oh, okay, it's not very stretchy, kind of broke apart. that I worked it out a little bit, a bit stretchier. So you're, you put, let's put this on top and then drizzle. It still is sticking to my hands a little bit, that one did. I wonder if my hands are just kind of naturally for the slime, if I have sticky hands. Oh, but the white slime, oh, it feels so nice. You can tell they put some lotion or like hand oil on this. It just feels so good. Raspberries, you're too big. Go in the. There you go. You can move in there. Oh, it stretches really good, you guys. Look at that. It is sticking to my hands a little bit. I think I just have very oily skin. Because I did wash them, but it's still like. Sticking a bit. Now I'm sure I can add some activator to it and that will fix that, but um, I think it's just maybe a bit of how my hands are. But because it has this beautiful scent, it's actually like kind of super addicting to just keep stretching it because it keeps like releasing that smell. And it's like just the right amount of of almost a little bit too much for my hand so it kind of like goops everywhere okay. 
Let's do the thing. Let's do the thing they do in all the slime videos, okay? I wish I could slime still. Maybe you just need to get like some really good slime. This is definitely different than like with store-bought slime, I think because it has literally lotion in it. And it has a nice smell too. I think that's really helping like for me as far as getting like some good skin vibes out of it. I don't know if that would work for you, Kaneko. Rubbery stress ball makes me feel nauseous. Oh, problem with smooth textures. Oh, I understand. Looks very, very smooth. It's very smooth. I love this, like, beautiful light pink color that it made when I mixed the uh, jelly in. Okay, you know what I'm also loving about slime? Playing with it so much. I love how it's like, it's messy, but then you just be like, boop, mess gone, all clean. Okay, so I think I have a good idea of what like the high quality slime feels like to play with. So I'm gonna show you my very basic slime and how it compares. Now, I made a very, very basic recipe. It has no lotion, no scents, no colors. It has, you know, absolutely nothing extra in it. Can I close this back up? I might have to wait until the bubbles fall out. I know there's air bubbles in there. Okay, why don't we do this? Let's just gently put the lid on. You can just sit to the side. Okay. It's actually feel really nice after playing with that. But it definitely had like some lotion in it. Okay. So here's the slime that I made. So the texture is honestly like not super different, but it's different enough that you can tell I've not made a lot of slime. Also, I kind of regret buying these containers because I'm not going to lie, it's hard to get back out. <laughs> but let's do it anyway. I should have gotten wide fat containers, but I didn't. You live and you learn. And I don't know if adding some other things into the slime will also help with it coming out of the container. Don't buy these tall containers, guys, if you want to make some slime after I show you how you do the slime stream. Do not buy these. It does not work for slime. These are little four ounce containers, but them being tall, it's no bueno. There we go. I'm getting the slime out now. Okay. That's good enough. I did. I, I was like, whatever, it'll be fine. You know, it was. it's not fine. It's not fine. Okay. I honestly feel like I have the right firmness here. Like, I think it's got a good ratio of activator to the glue, but watch, it's not nearly as stretchy. You can see how it's like breaking. You see on the camera, it's like, and it still stretches, but it's like, it's breaking. You can see that like there. It's not smooth, but it can still do good. So 
still makes nice noises. <laughs> yeah, you have to stretch it a little bit slower. But I've heard that if you put like vegetable glycerin or lotion or some other things like that in it, then you can make it stretchier. <gasps> Big stretch. So yeah, actually comparing this to the popular Snoop slime, I don't think I did too bad. Uh-oh, some a bit of dirt in my slime. I must have picked up something. I have a, I, I made this like a week ago and I've been playing with it. So it's not new fresh slime. She's a little used, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. So that's a little preview as a thank you for the 300 followers we will do a full slime stream with the asmr whisper voice okay we'll make different kinds of slimes we'll do all of that it's going to be in december so be on the lookout for a slime stream in december we'll do some slime tutorials to make some and we will um do the do it asmr and we'll play with it it'll be be a good ass time are you not going to go in your tub? Am I going to have to put some of you in here and some of you in the little tub? Is that how it's going to go? Because it's time for monster prom. So I have to clean up. I have to clean up slime. Are you going to let me clean up? Let's see if I just break some of you up. Ooh, that's probably too much. Put some of you in there. Put some of you in the little container. I have to really pack the slime in probably a big indicator of like the quality. Gosh. Let's see if this lid can go on now. Yes, okay, this lid can go on. Come on. There we go. Nope, didn't get it on this side. might not be able to save all the slime. It grew when I added all the thingies to it. Okay. We'll clean the rest of that up after stream. For now, do this. Put my mouse back in the right spot. All right. Okay, that was fun. We will um, we will schedule a full stream of that where we also do some tutorials in December. All right. I'm just gonna move all of this out of the way. Take my phone back because it's not being another camera for me. Okay. All right. Move out of the way, tripod. There we go. All right. I am going to go into my audio. I turned all of my Turned all of my gates off. So I gotta make sure that I turn those back on. Okay, all right. Does that sound normal again, you guys? Does that sound normal again? It looks like it sounds normal. Y'all tell me if it doesn't sound normal. All right. 
Uh, we are still sponsored by Magic Spoon. Okay, so we are going to do a Magic Spoon sponsorship um, around 7.30. So you guys let me know if you think I should try Frosted or Fruity. Those are the other two flavors to try. We've got Fruity right there, and we've got Frosted. Fruity and Frosted. That's the other two flavors we have to try. All right. Are y'all ready for some silly voices? Are y'all ready for some silly voices in Monster Prom? Because I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Let's go to the game. Uh oh. Uh... There we go. Now it will load. All right, you guys. Okay. So we have romanced most of these characters we still have not done a storyline with the vampire we've not taken him to prom we've not taken the um medusa lady to prom and technically we haven't taken the mermaid girl to prom however we did get one of her endings so we gotta we gotta do those other two first and we're working on steam achievements we're working on steam achievements so we can either go every time to class every time to the library um, every time to the outdoors, or every time to the gym, we could do any of those. Let's do a full game. Okay. Okay. We have seen all of this. We can skip, 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 skip. We are this one. Yes. And we are Karen. A A. I always wanna want it to be QWERTY. <laughs> I'm looking in the wrong Let's spot go. for the letters. Let's go. Okay, we have done this. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Yay! What? Okay, six weeks to choose our prom date. Let's go! Let's go! Stupidest quiz ever! Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Give me my stats. Okay. It's your chance to fix global warming. Go ahead. <laughs> global warming isn't real. I invented it, and now science is claiming authorship because science is lame copycat with no original ideas. Wow. <laughs> nah, the world is doomed, but I'll start investing in chips and start a profitable business for the soon-to-be-covered-by-water world. It's time to be a real hero. I'll lead the mission to the sun in order to invite the sun to the party of its life. We'll have so many hilarious misadventures that the sun will eventually become cooler. Um... Let's take the sun on adventures. My hands still smell like berries, by the way. I'm really digging it. <clears throat> you wish you were raised by a really progressive marriage between a kick-ass venomous snake and an actual fire. I love fire and I see no issue with being raised by it. A mysterious old man who saved me from the streets in order to raise me as his disciple in the ancient ways of rad DJing. A pack of wild wolves who also happen to be tech moguls who own some of the most profitable companies of Silicon Valley. And they would be kick-ass role models and wild wolves. Sick. Um, mmm, mmm. Sounds kind of bougie. Uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna learn the ancient ways of rad DJing. Yeah. Um, what would be a killer accessory? Okay, sunglasses at night, shiny armor, fancy brass knuckles, a fabulous purse made of the skin of your worst enemy, coolness itself, a necklace with your own name, in case you forget. Okay, what do we think that vampire boy or Medusa girl would like? I feel like maybe the fabulous purse made from the skin of your worst enemies one of them this has to be one of those two right right maybe let's try it oh yes it's the medusa girl okay well that's our choice all right thank you so much for lurking koneko we love our lurkers here all right we're gonna try to go after the medusa girl i think all right and let's do Let's do an all library run. Let's do an all library run. Let's go. That day you spend some time in library P PCs mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency, but you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Spoilers from the future. True, true. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to two million dollars, which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. <laughs> okay. You see hordes of your classmates running away from Vera and Scott. They're screaming, SPOILERS! Okay. We didn't fully decide on a voice for her. I think I'm just gonna try to maybe pitch my own voice a little bit lower. 
Have you seen the latest episode of Detective Wereweasel, where Weasel finally exposed the cartel's entire operation? Awesome, bro. I did. It was so exciting. I peed on my grandma's carpet. Not bad. I know, right? And the cartel's organization structure is so cool. I took so many notes. Oh, bro. But last night was the last episode. It was so sad. I peed on grandma's carpet. Well, why don't we start our own TV show? We'll make it better than Where Weasel. Uh, what? Better than Where Weasel? Is that even possible? We're the perfect team, and I have money, and you're the gullible target audience. Gorgana Film Studios requires your ideas. Scott Gorgana Film Studios? We'll talk about that later. Right now, I need ideas. Um, when the Mafia threatens to close this gym, an ugly-ass Nosferatu must expose the Syndicate to save the only place that lets him do his reps. Uh, Chile, 1985. When Pinochet floods the market with black cocaine, a courageous drug dealer becomes a private eye to blackmail Pinochet and save her coke labs. Mmm... I think this one, Jim, this has to be Scott. So this has to be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad. Yes. Did you just create the most relatable detective ever? That was a rhetorical question. Obviously, a young entrepreneur fighting to save her business from government regulation is objectively relatable. Oh no, are we going for the capitalist this time, you guys? I think we might be. But she's a drug trafficker. She's a businesswoman protecting free markets. Doesn't that sound to you like the Monsterian dream? I didn't think about it that way. But is she a buff entrepreneur? Like, really buff? Sure, why not? Hooray! All my objections have suddenly disappeared. <laughs> Vera puts you and Scott to work stuffing packets of promotional cocaine to publicize the TV show, plus three money. Ah, uh, maybe I'll have a run where I actually have money. Wouldn't that be nice? I, I, hopefully the shop lady will show up so I get to spend it. Okay. Oh, I found slime on my ring. Let me just... It's gonna bother me if I don't get it off right now. <laughs> okay, it's gone. All right. Where is she? There she is. You find Vera sitting in front of a pile of money instead of food. As usual, Damien comes over and drops his own money pile on the table and also oh, some organs. Not bad. Hmm, not bad but I prefer to exert a little less effort for my income. A dejected swamp creature slumps over to the table and adds some money to Vera's pile. Income? You mean this stuff? This is just what people throw at me to get me to stop punching them. And this is what people throw at me to keep me from revealing what kind of porn they're into. Wow, Vera, Vera, you nasty. But I agree, the money is only secondary. The frowns on their faces are their own reward. Still, I'm always looking to approve efficiency. <laughs> Have you tried developing business contracts in hell? Your victims will be even more terrified if they know death won't save them. Yeah, but that doesn't work on the undead. For those, you need a priest. A priest? You know how many family, how my family feels about priests? Ugh, I'm sick of terrorizing people one at a time. There's got to be a way to terrorize everybody in the cafeteria at once. And make money at the same time. I'm sure there is. That is, after all, the essence of capitalism. No! I guess we have to go for her ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. We're committing, you guys. We're committing. Okay, we're committing. Maybe, maybe we can, maybe we can change her. <sighs> Set the building on fire and charge an exit fee. Trick everybody in the cafeteria into having an orgy, then film it. Blackmail in bulk. Blackmail in bulk. Simple, elegant, raunchy. I like your style. But how are you going to trick the whole room full of people into having an orgy? Don't tell me you don't know how to do that. Is this, is this something you do all the time? Is this something you don't do all the time? I thought you were a prince of hell. Yeah, but I'm a prince of the burny part of hell, not the sexy part of hell. That explains it. Well, to answer your question, this is a room full of high schoolers. A slight breeze could instigate an orgy. <laughs> Although, the succubus sauce I snuck into the Sloppy Joes won't hurt either. It certainly doesn't. You, Vera, and Damien retreat a safe distance to film the sexy carnage and avoid the fluids. All right, all right. We're doing this. Powered, powered by my lychee tea. 
Oh, it's so, I love lychee. Mm. Okay, what were we doing? We were doing all library run. Okay, let's go. That day you spend some time in the library PCs playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time it paid off, so fuck it. Plus two money. <laughs> Fantastic. I guess this, I guess if you want to do the, uh, this it's the money run. That night you hit the clubs with Vera and Polly. Thank Satan for fake IDs. <laughs> Put those wallets away, you two. Drinks are on me. By which I mean, drinks are on that guy. <laughs> No need, Polly. I'm into this crazy new thing called paying for my own drinks. Maybe you've heard of it? Maybe. Is that French for my boobs aren't big enough to get free drinks? Ugh, feminism is dead. <laughs> that sounds like a reason to drink. BRB. But soon. Huh? It, it didn't work. Give up. What was that you said? It sounded like Portuguese for my shameless pandering didn't get us any free drinks. <laughs> Ugh. This is quickly getting out of control. Maybe if you find a way to make that guy pay for your drinks, you can fix this. Um, it's party time. So date the guy when he's in the bathroom, put on a pair of sunglasses on him and pretend he's your pal. It's crime time. Steal the guy's wallet to learn his address, then go to his house, kidnap his daughter and demand drinks. <sighs> Vera, you bad girl. Your plan goes super well right through the kidnapping, but hits a snag when you call up the dude to demand a ransom. Hey, Rar, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day today. Uh, I don't know who you are. He breathes into the phone. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have is a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. You rush to hang up the phone, but it's too late. He started a personal vendetta journey against you, which gets really unpleasant, especially when he goes all perilla on your ass. You literally could have just used his wallet to buy the drinks. Why did you always have to jump straight to kidnapping? Because Vera likes it, okay? She likes it, okay? And I'm, I'm being capitalist brainwashed. I don't know, that's why, that's why. Yes, you may, we're doing, we're doing Vera. This is a Vera run. An, an all library Vera run. Um, yeah. <laughs> She's apparently a, a capitalist girl boss business mogul. So yes, she likes dumb people. Okay, that day you spend some time on the library PCs managing your start kicker. Oh, kicks, okay. You deceive a lot of people with sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice. You gain 100,000 money but almost everything goes to cover costs and you keep too many. Later, you see Vera cracking her to herself in the hallway. Oh, cackling to herself in the hallway, which is whatever, but you might as well find out why. <laughs> Just practicing my prom queen acceptance speech in my mind. It's not like the title bears any meaning whatsoever, of course, and I really do consider the whole thing way beneath me. However, considering how much meaning other girls put on it, I can't risk some uppity bitch thinking she's better than I am. Plus, it's not bad branding either. I could see using a victory to start a line of successful prom queen accessories guaranteed to get you the win. Perfect prom shoes, the right makeup, fancy knives to take out your opponents. Speaking of which, I assume this goes without saying, but I'm not leaving anything to chance. I'll be doing a blood ritual to ensure my win. I still haven't found the exact details yet, but I'm optimistic that at least some of the items will be found in the shop. The only question is where exactly I can find the details for a proper blood ritual. Why don't we ask the coven? They're witches. They should know all about blood magic. Literally just search the internet. Like that's literally what it's there for. Do I condescend to Vera? Do I condescend to... Do capitalists Google stuff for themselves or do they get their underlings to do it for them? They get their underlings to do it for them. What am I saying? We're gonna ask the coven. Of course, I knew those basic bitches would come in handy one day. Actually, I really didn't. I always thought they were pretty useless, but I'm never mad to be proven wrong when it serves me. 
Using the skills you gained during the extra credit summoning seminar, you call forth the coven. What is it now? Is there some emergency in the world in need of saving? Of course not. The world is the worst. Why would I ever want to save it? No, I just want to be prom queen and I need some blood magic to guarantee my victory. And I figured you three could do something productive for once. Under no circumstances will we re will we be revealing any magical secrets to help a petty little brat become prom queen. I genuinely cannot think of a more frivolous use of blood magic than this egotistical little side quest. Every time I think of the students of this school could not be any more ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. When I need your opinion, I'll ask for it. You're the one who called us here. Yeah, a lot of help you've been. Now get out of my sight before I use my sight to turn you to stone. Vera turns to your sorry ass. Um, hi, that includes you, useless. I'll find the ingredients myself. Thanks for nothing. Yeah, useless, minus two smarts and minus one charm. Fuck. Dang it, I should have told her to Google. I, okay, she wants the right answer. I guess that's what we've learned. She wants the right answer. You find Damien and Vera hunched over a scale model of spooky National Bank made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. All right, we'll go in through the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP, and blow the safe. <laughs> Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms, and blow up the safe? <sighs> because we only have so much C4, Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. What's this thing? Damien points at a kosher dill pickle in front of the vault labeled Police Ogre. That's the police ogre. He's got eyes all the way around his head, never sleeps, doesn't take bribes, and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? No, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yo, Karen, we'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Luckily, you're a heist mastermind. Before Vera or Damien can react, you um, rob the bank yourself and split the money with Vera, eat the pickle. <laughs> uh, we're doing this. Yes, obviously. Quick, as a flash, you take the cab over to the bank, walk in the front door, fist bump the police ogre, and walk out with all the money. You ride back to school and dump half the money out on the table, totally burying their shitty scale model of the bank. What? How? You explain that you and the police ogre go to the same salsa dancing class. Taking advantage of personal friendships for illicit profit? I've never respected you more. Yes, I've won her back. I assume this pile of money and gold ingots is not my share. You nod sexily. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe it is. Hey, where's my cut? I've got your cut right here, interloper. Vera stabs Damien with one of the irresponsibly sharp butter knives the school cafeteria provides. You've never been more turned on. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love a very bad girl. Oh no. Oh no, I actually really like her. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the library. That day you spent some time on the library's PC sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose minus 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares, and plus two money. Afterwards, you discover you've been poisoned, and only Vera has the antidote. She does this all the time. It's how she invites you to hang out. Hey Baby. Baby, this isn't necessary. You don't have to. Okay, anyway. There you are. Thank you so much for coming. I'm embarking on a new criminal enterprise, and I need a conci concierge. Yep, that's a word. The idea is simple, yet brilliant. Think Uber, but for killing people. I call it murder. But it turns out the market is flooded with assassination apps. Assassination apps in blood. I need a way to get ahead of the pack. And since you're such a good advisor... Oh no. <laughs> uh, differentiate yourself by being the only service that offers free-range organic murders. Viral marketing, literally. Tailor a highly contagious virus to make people love murder. Mm. Viral marketing. Viral marketing. Okay, let's see. Let's see. 
You can do that? That's brilliant. You can use my private chemical weapons laboratory. Of course she has one. Of course she does. But soon. You fool! Your virus didn't make everyone love murder. It made them love murder. Just regular murder with an E before the R. This is a disaster. People are just running around stabbing each other, cooking each other with flamethrowers, running each other over the tanks. It's horrible. I mean, it's completely obliterated demand for my product. Why buy the cow when you can get the murder for free? Ugh, now I'm going to have to wait for the government to develop a vaccine before I can resume my life of crime again. I keep messing up. I'm, I'm sorry, Vera. I'm sorry, baby. In her rage, Vera totally forgets to give you the antidote to the poison you drank earlier. Vera? Vera, why? Baby. But I love you. But I love you. It is. R.I.P. me. R.I.P. me. Okay. Let's go let's go back to the library. Uh okay, we're managing our start kicker again. Yep. Um, same thing. Okay, yes, we did this one. But we got more money. Without warning, Vera pulls you aside and hisses in your ear. Oh my god, the stalker's back. You follow her pointed finger and see a guy dressed in a white toga and winged sandals facing away from you. He looks like a creep. He's been following me everywhere. He thinks I don't notice him checking me out in the mirrored shield he has, but I totally do. Ugh, it's such a chore being this beautiful all the time. How am I ever going to get rid of him? Um, threaten to feed a damsel to a sea monster. That'll distract him. He looks Greek. Why not bribe Zeus, king of the gods? Okay. We have to choose the option that would actually work. Let's choose this one this time. This seems like the more plausible, less extra option. Or maybe not. Maybe we should have bribed Zeus. I don't know what you want, Vera. Um, excuse me? You want me to get rid of my stalker by giving him another girl to stalk? Are you out of your mind? I will not stand for another girl having more stalkers than me. It's just not right. I'm the hottest. He stalks me, or he stalks no one. Got it. Vera stalks off stalked by her stalker. No! I thought you wanted to get rid of him, Vera. Okay. God damn! Okay. At least we're winning on the lunch round. Okay, here we go. You take your seat, and if you didn't know any better, you would say that it seems like Vera and Polly are almost more interested in their phones than they are in you. And you don't know, and you do know better. And you know that yes, that is exactly what's happening right now. It's nothing personal, Karen. It's just that Polly and I are very engrossed in texting our financial slave. Yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with some guy whose fetish is buying you anything you want. That's my fetish too. Not buying things for people, having people buy things for me. Duh. Good thing he's rich enough to take care of both of us. You know what they say, true friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if he runs out of money? Our cash flow instantly stops. Besides, being handed everything you want on a platter, in this case the platter being an online money transfer platform, is almost boring. Yeah, I get that. It's a little less boring when you're on as much acid as I am right now, but I see what you mean. If we could somehow turn this into a business venture, then maybe it would get interesting. And we could continue to profit, even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. I mean, how interesting do you think business actually is? Since he's so obsessed with us, we should just tell him to do something totally insane and see if he does it. I don't know. A weirdo giving away his money and getting into hijinks is great and all, but I want to start making real money. And I think money is fine and all, but my favorite currency is chaos. I think my mic might be too loud. We're gonna, gonna turn this, turn the games down just a little bit. Yeah. It seems like the ladies are at a very exciting crossroads. Maybe a random bystander can give them a nudge in the right direction. I think my poly voice is just too loud. <laughs> Um, tell him to marry a llama. You can easily grow this arrangement into a business. Just escalate and delegate. You have the financial slave go and acquire his own financial slave to give him money and have that financial slave. Okay, we're going to make a pyramid scheme. Vera wants a pyramid scheme. Yes. Okay. I, I can do the lunch rounds. I'm doing good on the lunch rounds. Okay. Haha. <laughs> that would increase our income exponentially immediately, which are two of my absolute favorite adverbs when it comes to monetary gain. 
I mean, one financial slave between the two of us is already strangely a lot to handle, so managing an army of them sounds draining. But as long as it's a pyramid scheme and we're at the top of the pyramid where we don't have to actually deal with the low lives, who cares? Meh, I think I'll just go check my toilet wine. Don't worry about her. Polly wouldn't know a good business idea if it slapped her on the ass. Which happened one time, actually. But it's a long story, so forget it. Anyways, we can tell people in order to become official certified financial slaves, they have to buy a kit of supplies. And they'll start at Dirt Slave. And then they can get five financial slaves under them. They can become a pathetic ground slave. And then they can work their way all the way up to gold, diamond, platinum, sachao, mocha, grand supreme slave. This was a great idea, Karen. We should go write the business plan together and prepare for profit. Did, did Vera actually say she wants to profit with you? Holy shit, Vera is sharing her cash flow. It's like a third base for her. Awesome. Okay. We're doing it, you guys. We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay. Oh yes, the shop is in the library and I have 18 monies. Fuck yeah, I can buy something. Hey, last night I read this article on how money causes pocket cancer in the long run. You don't want to get pocket cancer. Quick, give me that dangerous money you have in your still healthy pockets. Okay. Okay. Here's the problem. We actually have money. But I don't know if I want to trigger an event because... These are all five. Okay, wait a second. What's the most expensive thing? We've got a $10 penguin mask. We've got $10 cocaine. Let's get the penguin mask. Thanks. Okay. Well, that made me even dumber. I've got negative nine smarts. Holy shit. I'm always amazed at how... Oh, wrong voice. I'm always amazed at how people keep... How people keep coming and buying all this stupid crap. Intriguing. Okay, we bought something with our many monies. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, back to the library. Uh, we're doing our start kicker. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this sweet. Okay, fantastic. As you walk down the hallway trying to beat a level of bone crush on your phone, you run smack into Vera, also engrossed in her phone. Sure, feel free to read over my shoulder. You wouldn't understand the charts anyway. Uh. Miranda's been mouthing off about being a princess again, as if that's so amazing. Pathetic. She's a princess underwater. You know what's underwater? Sea slugs and fish shit. You know what's not underwater? This school. Why should birthright matter when there are so many other factors that determine a person's worth? Their beauty, their cruelty, their business sense. And using all of these factors, I've divided the school into cools and uncools. <laughs> Now, I just need to find a way to reinforce the superiority of the cools over the uncools. Um, uncool students should have to carry cool students from class to class on chases. A uh, rotting squid should be thrown at the uncool students to remind them of how uncool they are. I think she would like... She would like the carrying. I think. Okay. Do it right this time, Karen. Okay, do it right. Oh, okay. Okay, that was a positive audio. Okay. I do worry about my shoes getting scuffed and getting up from class to class. These cockatrice scale pumps cost $2,000. What am I supposed to do? Walk in them? Of course the uncool student should pay for the chases out of pocket. Hmm, maybe I'll go to the chase business, exploit my fellow students, advance the cools, and turn up my feet. A few days later, you see Vera being carried from um, Apparitions 3 to AP Fearmongering on a beautiful studded couch. You notice there's a tag on it that says Oberlin Upholstery, and Vera's counting her money. Sweet. We gain plus two money and plus one smarts. Oh, we got a little bit of smarts back. That's nice. That's nice. We're still at negative eight. <laughs> Let's go. All right, back over here. You arrive at Polly and Vera's table to find them eating. Wait, both of them? Oh, yum, yum. I sure do love food and eating. Look at this food. Go me. Oh, go in me. <laughs> mm, yes, the cafeteria's sloppy joe truly has a subtle flavor profile. 
Finally, you notice the cause of this absurdity, a well-dressed businessman sitting at the next table watching both women intently. Oh yeah, I know you like this, baby. My eating is realistic and erotic. Be cool, Polly. This man wants to pay us for eating in front of him, not screaming about eating. Is this not what eating is? I forget. While Vera tries to explain eating to Polly, the businessman shyly approaches you and gives a small bow. Much obliged, friend, he says in a soft voice. Are these two fine ladies your friends? I must confess that I have searched far and wide for a suitable candidate to fill my rather unusual fetish. Paying a student at a high school for monsters to eat food while I watch politely from a distance. Well, that is rather specific, sir. But I find myself unable to choose which of these two beauties to hire. The snake-headed one possesses a certain grace. Yeah, pay me, motherfucker. Pay me to do a thing I was going to do anyway. But the translucent one has such passion. I don't even want the money. This is just fucking weird, and I love it. In your opinion, the businessman finishes. What would be the wiser choice on my part? Um, the Gorgon. We're going for we're going for her. So we have Vera. Okay. Yep. Look at how many mouths she's got on her head. Exactly. That's good. Okay. Yes, and she liked it. Good. I was supposed to. <laughs> she wants the money, honey. She wants the money. The businessman strokes his chin and nods. Hmm, you have a point, he says. The ghost only has one mouth. Also, food seems to go right through her. This Gorgon, meanwhile, has countless mouths. Such value. Value is right, Provo. A thousand in cash, up front. You pay all my meals, and you give me your pants. Holy shit, he's doing it! He's doing it! He's getting naked! Viewer is able to convince the businessman to pay for her fancy dinner for you and her. It's a little creepy with him watching the two of you, but you get over it. For a free meal, I guess, right? Let's go. I mean, like, how fancy are we talking? I might not be opposed. <laughs> okay, back to the library. All right, start kicker. Yeah, plus two money. I feel like there's less um, library prompts than some of the other areas. I don't know if I just keep, if it's just the three over and over, but I feel like there's four or five in the others. Anyway. In the course of your activities, you come across Vera and Polly hatching yet another scheme. You sneak a little closer so you can Hi. eavesdrop. Listen, this has been a fruitful partnership so far in terms of making people look like imbeciles. But I think it's time we monetize. Sick burns don't buy fresh outfits. Yeah, yeah, fine, whatever. I guess I could just use some new thongs or whatever, but like, I don't want to stop making people look dumb just so we can make money. I don't want to sell out. Personally, I can't wait to sell out, but you have a point. We can't sacrifice our brand. Yeah, library is definitely the money grinder for sure. The question, of course, is how we do both. Yeah, how do we get rich off of yanking people's chains? Ugh, careful with your choice of words, Polly. What? Chains are a big thing for ghosts. Of course. They don't seem to have any immediate ideas. Maybe you can offer a solution. Why don't you make up phony workout craze? It worked for Frank Pilates, the inventor of Pilates. <laughs> oh man, do I have a great prank for you. It's called stealing. Um, I think this is the Polly answer and this is the Vera answer. So here we go. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I accidentally did the Polly answer. Oh my God, that's so good. We could just make up a bunch of ridiculous exercises like tongue squats and dick crunches and encourage people to post selfies of their workout success. Let's see one week subscription to our proprietary exercise tracker for one dollar 49.99 for every hour thereafter i think we might actually turn a profit on this one polly and hey if a bunch of people get stronger dicks and tongues in the process i'm not gonna complain if you know what i mean you have no idea what you've just unleashed on the world and these two seem happy to be uh, with you uh plus one creativity and plus two smarts okay okay all right well 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 <laughs> Uh, yep. Library. Okay, star kicker. Yes, 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 yes. Plus two money. Later, you're wandering through the halls when you hear a voice from Hi. around the corner. Hey. I seem to have accidentally turned a bitch to stone with my gaze. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, she totally deserved it. Her nose is obviously fake. Plus that nail polish. Abominable. But this isn't exactly the first time I've done this, and Principal Giant Spider said that if I did it again, I'd get detention. So now I need to dispose of yet another body, and I thought that since you're so attractive and kind and clever, you'd be willing to cover up the literal murder I've committed. No questions asked. Right. 
Okay. Easy will just dress her up in some stuff from the theater and set her up in the quad like she's an art piece. Never you fear my lovely murderess, my good buddy Mr. Hammer will make short work of the evidence. I'll even give you the nose as a trophy. She does love murder. A girl loves murder. I feel like she would want a trophy. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared, but I think she would want a trophy. Maybe not. You raise your hammer to begin smashing, but Vera stops you with a look. It doesn't quite turn you to stone, but close enough. Wait, what are we even doing here? Smashing a defenseless girl with a hammer in the middle of a high school? And why? Just so no one will know I murdered her? What's the point of even murdering people if no one knows you can murder people? I've got a reputation to uphold. You're a failure. I can't believe I almost let you destroy the evidence of my totally justifiable homicide. Get out of here with that hammer before I make you eat it. Vera's never going to go to prom with me. Uh, someday you'll get to smash a Pester 5 monster with a hammer. Someday, but not today. Minus 2 charm and minus 1 fun. Let's go. The thing is, is like out of all these characters, I vibed the most with Polly. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. I vibed the most with the crazy chaos druggie. It's what, it's what happened. As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately lifting a forkful of quinoa into her mouth. She brings lunch from home. When... Food, fork, six, eight. Who do we dedicate eating? Eating. Yeah, eating. Ugh. Ugh, Scott, what on earth are you doing? I'm cheerleading you to help you be the best eater in the whole school. What caused this obsession with cheerleading me through mundane activities that require no cheerleading? <laughs> Everything requires cheerleading, silly. That's why we have cheerleaders for our cheerleaders. But I can see my cheerleading's not working. You haven't eaten anything yet. That's because you keep staring at me with your damn cheerleading. I can't eat when I'm startled. No, that can't be it. I must not be cheerleading hard enough. Hey friend, maybe you can help me. Uh, you should, shouldn't be cheerleading for Vera to eat the food. You should be cheering for the food to get eaten by Vera in the walk-in freezer. <laughs> the problem is obviously that we aren't dressed up as giants, as a giant salad. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm supposed to send Scott away to the freezer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, duh. It's just like when we cheer for the other team to lose instead of cheering for our team to win. Yes, I invented that cheerleading strategy. It gives us a huge psychological edge against teams that hate losing. I'm gonna go try it right now. Those vegetables are gonna get so inspired. Scott runs off to the kitchen to inspire the vegetables. You can still hear his muffled shouting from the back, but it's that not bad. That has been quite pleasing. <laughs> Thanks, Vera. Thanks, now I can finally enjoy this quinoa and baby tear salad without unwanted encouragement. For the next week, all of the cafeteria food seems extremely eager to get in your mouth. Cheerleading really works. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's go to the library. Okay, we're doing start kicker again. Plus two money. As you survey the library, you notice Vera, who snakes are hissing and spitting as she glares at her computer monitor. This shit is getting so, so, so old. Every time I go on a dark arts forum, I have to deal with sexist trolls, trying to call me out and prove that I'm a fake dark arts girl. Oh yeah, you like Lich King so much? Name three of their earliest curses. You probably just take pictures of yourself with cursed artifacts to get attention. As if I can't want to murder people in obscure occult ways just because I'm female. Please. I'm so sick of dealing with this sexist bullshit when all I want to do is use magic to make people suffer. I don't even know what to do. Um, you should write a heated essay decrying sexism, an essay so heated it melts the eyeballs off of anyone who reads it. You don't need to prove your love of the dark arts, just go out and enjoy them. Also, I should totally come with you. Okay. My gut says this one, so I'm gonna go the opposite because I keep guessing wrong. I think she doesn't need to prove it. She doesn't need to prove it, okay? You're you're a, you're a girl boss, um, super babe. Okay, you don't need to prove it. Not so charming, my god. 
Hmm, it's not like I can't be a badass of the Dark Gods girl on my own, but I suppose a little company couldn't hurt, right? Nailed it! Time to tech Vera to the darkest, artsiest date of all time. One that you're a thousand percent sure she's gonna love. Dark arts con? Are you serious? How am I supposed to feel legit at the most cliche, contrived, commercialized, basic reduction of the dark arts there ever was? Why did I do that? Why? Oh shit, this does not bode well. Yeah! Why? She doesn't like this con. Okay, we didn't have to do a con. Ugh. Panel 203, sacrificing a nubile version to attain ultimate wisdom. Wow, we sure are getting away from sexist tropes now. I don't know, some of the characters are harder for me. Like, I, I had a hard time with Damien, too. You enter Hall HHH, the largest hall that's ever been. <laughs> Hall H. Yes. You survey the stage as tons of monsters take dramatic selfies. Are those candles spray painted black? Why not just let them actually be whatever color they were? Like the color actually matters. This is such fake bullshit. And half of those symbols aren't even runes. They're just random squiggles that look like they were drawn by a drunk toddler. This is the lamest ritual I've ever been to. It's so lame that even the coven is here. Hey, rude, we resent that. You clearly don't know any more about the dark arts than those douchebags on the internet. What's next? Wearing skull jewelry and listening to heavy metal with lyrics about blood rain? I'm out. Before the coven starts to tell us why this is necessary to save the world somehow. Bye. Vera storms haughtily off and you make a quick call to blood rain jesters to cancel the private performance you had just scheduled outside of Vera's window. Oh no. Oh no. That's the second time that we've heard the coven talking about the world ending. So that's interesting. You win some, you lose some. In this case, you lost a lot. Okay, minus two fun, minus one creativity. All right, last week, week six. Let's go. Um, let's pause. Let's pause for an ad break. Uh, no, I don't. I don't want. I just wanted to turn down the volume somehow. I don't know if I can. Okay, I think we're just gonna have to turn it down. All right, you guys, tonight's stream is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a high protein, low carb cereal. We've tried two of the flavors so far. We've tried peanut butter and we've tried chocolate. Um, I think objectively chocolate was the better flavor. However, I enjoyed the peanut butter more, mostly because I just really like peanut butter, but they've been pretty good. So we're gonna try another one tonight. We're gonna try another one tonight. We've got frosted or we've got fruity. I'm gonna go get the milk. And then we're gonna choose which one we're gonna try. We got milk, fruity, frosty. Oh, frosty. Okay, yes, we can try frosted. Okay, I am super, super curious about this one. How do you have zero sugars in a flavor called frosted? I don't understand. Oh, hi Oreo, do you wanna say hi to the stream? Wait a second, Oreo says before cereal, hello. Oh gosh, you've gotten so big. Oh gosh. Hi, Oreo. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi. Mwah. We're so gigantic. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> this is why I add sugar to my cornflakes. Yeah, so this is basically the whole point of this cereal is it's supposed to remind you of cereals you had as a kid, but they actually don't have sugar in them. Um. And the other two, like, they really have not been sweet, okay? Like, the cocoa one and the peanut butter one both were very, like, chocolatey and peanut buttery, respectively, but they were not sweet at all. Oh, my God. It smells like cookies. It smells like vanilla cookies. I was not expecting this. I was honestly expecting this one to be super bland because how is it frosted with no sugar? Let's pour, let's pour our bowl. Okay. All right, frosted. Maybe, maybe it's supposed to taste like frosting. It's 
smells like frosting. Honestly, that's what it smells like. It's not cookies. It smells like buttercream frosting. Okay. Here we go. That's too big of a bite. There we go. I told you guys I wouldn't lie to you. So I'm not going to. Even the magic spoon is paying me. Don't get this flavor. It's not good. I'm like, I'm not like joking or being sarcastic or anything. It smells amazing. It tastes like nothing. Just buy regular Cheerios. There's no point. Chocolate and peanut butter both was like way better. Don't get frosted. Yeah, it smell it smells the best. Out of all of them I've tried so far, it smells the best, but it doesn't taste like anything. Yeah, or add sugar. And the whole point is it's supposed to be zero sugar cereals, but like this one needs some sugar. I bet if I put a spoonful of sugar in it, it would taste better. Let me see what it tastes like dry. See if that changes anything. It's a little bit more flavorful dry, but not much. Not much. Take one more bite just to be sure of my assessment. Okay. Conceptually, the idea of like doing a frosted flavor cereal with zero sugar, I just think is a flawed concept. This can't, you can't, you just can't. Why? I think they, I think they took on an impossible task. Okay. So the way that they're getting the sweetener is, um, monk fruit extract and stevia extract. There's not even a lot of monk fruit in here. Honestly, there truly isn't. Cause I know what monk fruit tastes like. I don't like monk fruit, by the way. I think it's disgusting. Um, but you can't, you don't taste it, okay? And then it also has inulin, which probably adds a little bit of sweet to it as well. It says inulin from cherry root or agave. Don't taste any of that either. It doesn't taste, I don't taste anything like um, chicory root or agave. So yeah. I didn't know monk fruit was a sweetener or existed. Oh yeah, it's like a fancy, like if you're on keto, you can use it for a sweetening. There's like monk fruit sweetened stuff. Um, I don't like monk fruit, it's not good. It's not good. Okay, just one more now that it's sat in the milk fruit. I just, I'm really sad, but I think conceptually this is just a flawed thing. It's not good, okay, it's not good. It's just boring. It's just boring. It's not gross or anything. I could eat this whole bowl if I was hungry and it wouldn't be a problem. It wouldn't be hard to do. It's just, it's just boring. It's just boring. Um, yeah, I guess you can't win them all. Okay. I'm going to go clean up. I'll be right back because I can't just leave the milk in here. I got to go put it back in the fridge. Yeah, I mean, if you got this and so that you could control the amount of sugar, that might be a reason to get this. Because um, I know if you added sugar to this, it would be good because it smells amazing and the texture is still good. Like the other ones, it has the same texture, so, which I still like. I think it's good. But there's no flavor. It doesn't taste like anything. It doesn't taste like anything. It just smells, which it smells amazing. But yeah, anyway, I'll be right back. I'm going to put the milk up. All right, I'm back. When I mean dust, I would dump about three cups. <laughs> try the fruity one next Thursday. But yeah, so far, peanut and cocoa, way freaking better. Way for that that flavor was the first one that I've tried that I thought was like not good. 
Okay. All right. Library again. Final week. Okay. Bitcoins. I need so much sugar in my cereal. <laughs> yeah, I really don't eat cereal much anymore because it's just there's too much sugar in it for me. I've gotten to an age where it's like, that's just not, if I'm going to eat something sugary, like that's not what I'm going to eat. You know what I mean? Okay, plus two bitcoins, yes. You're making your daily, oh, it's not her voice, it's narrator voice. You're making your daily protection payment to Vera when suddenly. <laughs> Everyone stop what you're, I can't remember his voice. Everyone stop what you're doing and look at my majestic visage. <laughs> the interdimensional prince muscling in on my territory are you. Not at all, my darling vipress. I'm here strictly on a business capacity. Business, you say? I'm all ears, except for my snakes, which are all tongues and teeth. It's simple economics, my love. You're an aspiring crime kingpin. I'm a prince. I propose a merger. A merger of our resources, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. Not bad. Interesting. Oh no, Vera's getting her out her calculator if she decides this merger is financially viable. Good luck asking her to prom. But how will you undermine Vera's confidence in the prince's financial status? Um, replace all of his gold with fish, steal all of his money with high frequency trading algorithm Carl. <sighs> Another choice. Do we replace with fish or steal? I feel like Vero would want us to steal. Because then the money is ours now. And we could give it to her. I didn't like that sound. That wasn't what I was supposed to choose, I guess. You unleash your pet computer algorithm on the prince's financial network, but you didn't anticipate the warping effect of interdimensional travel. Carl becomes self-aware. It turns out Carl doesn't like being forced to bankrupt random princes you don't like. Carl doesn't even like you. He teams up with an extra-dimensional insect conglomerate to buy all of your clothes and sell them to an army of huge intelligent wasps. Okay, I know we're taking talking business just now, but that's going to have to take a backseat to my number one favorite activity. <laughs> watching an idiot get stripped naked by giant moths. You love watching idiots get stripped naked by giant moths as much as the next monster, but it's different when the idiot is you! Minus two boldness, minus one smarts. Holy shit, look at my stats. They're all crap except for money. I just, I'm big, dumb, rich kid. Carl should get over it. You were supposed to help me, Carl. I'm so disappointed in you. Okay, here we go. Beer is about to lift a glass of scotch to her immaculately painted lips. You can drink whatever at the school, apparently. When Miranda screams, Stop! Don't drink that! Why not? The scotch costs more than most cars. Has your taster tried it yet? What taster? You don't have a taster? What if your drink is poisoned by someone jealous of your good looks and royal title? Listen, Mary, I only drink four things. Scotch red wine, the tears of my enemies, and straight up poison. You drink poison on purpose? Miranda, my hair is venomous snakes. You think poison actually harms me? Well, well, you should still have a taster. What if someone puts really spicy hot sauce in your drink or poison? Ugh, what do I have to do to get you to drop this? Simple, hire a taster. Fine, any volunteers? This might just be the big break you've been looking for. You raise your hand. Oh, excuse me. And when Vera picks you, you um, drink all of your scotch and raging Vera and delighting Mira. Pretend to be poison, terrifying Miranda and amusing Vera. Oh yeah, there we go. It told me the right answer that time. Thank you, game. <laughs> Maybe if you get enough money, Vera will look at, overlook everything else. I hope so. You should Vera a wink, take the tiniest sip of her scotch, and then... No, no, stop vomiting! How will you be able to taste for the poison if you're too busy foaming at the mouth and vomiting? You fool. She is poisoned. Run and tell the authorities before this poor sap's face melts off or something. Oh dear! Oh my! I'm no good in crisis situations! Curse my uniformly pleasant childhood! Miranda faints with the utmost drama, and if there's one thing princesses are good at, it's fainting. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. I should put my poison in scotch more often. I should put poison in my scotch more often, whatever, same thing. You can stop vomiting now, by the way. She passed out. Oh, do you need the antidote? All right, here you go. I guess I should have let you know the scotch was actually poisoned. 
Oh well, how about we get ice cream to make up for it? Your stomach's still too weak for ice cream, but you're never too sick to spend some quality time with Vera. Bless. Let's go. Okay. Um, we are going to the library again. Okay. Yay, we got the achievement. All right, plus two money. Hey, Karen, remember that one time at the party where you explained to me in great detail your brilliant secrets of the business world? Holy shit, you do not, and that doesn't sound like your area of expertise at all. You must have been pretty drunk. But it's Vera, so you smile and nod. Well, I will be attending a very fancy and important business dinner event tonight full of powerful people by exclusive invitation. And by exclusive invitation, I mean I'm going to use my Gorgon powers to turn the concierge into stone and then sneak it. I'd love to see you put other people's money where your mouth is if you're not doing anything tonight. You were planning on reorganizing your collection of very rare mint condition Pokemon cards. Oh, Pokemon cards, that's right. The popular trading card game based on the even more popular video game Pocket Humans. Each card depicts a human with a specific job and bio, but that can wait. So, when the time rolls around for the fancy business dinner, you shove them in your pocket and roll out. Karen, over here, glad you could make it. I've been raking in business cards hand over claw so far. I met Gertrude Gorgonzola, the Diamond Tampon Tycoon, and Ray K. Bebop, the social media influencer slash rapper slash robot, and they're both very excited to do business with me. How have you done so far? You turn out your pockets and show Vera the evidence of your endeavors, which consists of the lobby card for the hotel the convention is in, and the only thing handed to you by a real businessman. A sticky note with the word no, written in red sharpie. Maybe I should have invited someone else. Literally, anyone else. No, it's okay, you still have an hour left at the event. It's time to pull out all the stops and choose an amazing tactic with as many business cards as you can to prove to Vera what a valuable business asset and or a prom date you are. Okay, you may have new businesses and therefore no business cards, but you sure as all have Pokemon cards, trade those. Convince the business people you have a rare disease that can only be cured if you're given a hundred business cards. Maybe I can convince the business people that the Pokemon cards are worth money. Let's do, okay. Mm, not so creative, that's not good. That's not good. Okay. Quick as a flash, you pull out your dope collection of Pokemon cards. Hey, yells a lizard person in an impeccably tailored pinstripe. Are those Pokemon cards? I love Pokemon! Cries a nearby spawn of Cthulhu with drawing a pack of cards from his purse. Pocket humans are the humans I hate least. Soon you were surrounded by businessmen, all enthusiastically pulling out their collections of Pokemon cards. Who knew a trading card game based on a video game, mostly for much younger monsters, would have such an immense popularity in the high-end business community? I did, I kinda, I kinda guessed that. A dozen or so of you sit on the floor swapping cards back and forth as you swap stories of the best Pokemon tournaments you've played in. Uh oh, <laughs> here she is. What the hell is going on over here? Why is everyone on the floor? You show Vera your impressive new collection of rare Pokemon cards you've preferred. Pokemon cards? How is this of any way useful to me? Pokemon aren't real. I need a business cards to get real business contacts. And not only did you not get any business cards, now I won't be able to either. I know how you Pokemon nerds roll. Once you get started, it's impossible to get you to stop. I might as well just go home at this point. Once again, children ruin everything. You start to launch into your trademark tirade about how po Pocket Humans merchandise isn't just for children, but it's too late. Vera is gone. Motherfucker. Why didn't I just use these skills of impressing them to ask for cards? Duh. I should have said, give me your business cards. Okay. We fucked up really bad. This might be our first rejection. I just couldn't get into the capitalist mindset. I just couldn't get into it. I just, I couldn't. So, hey. here we go. Yes. We're gonna Let's ask go. her. Let's see what happens. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to Monster Prom with you. You're asking me to go to prom with you? Sorry, I'm focusing Ugh. on my career. My career in not dating losers like you. <laughs> Bye, loser. <laughs> Pathetic. We got our first rejection, you guys. 
What a loser. After that, you were forced to abandon your home and join the underground society of sad people who couldn't get a date to Monster Prom, which is a fancy way of saying you had to live the rest of your life in the fucking sewer. Gross. What? That's what happens when you get rejected? Most likely to become lasagna. I'm not being paid for this quote. This is outrageous. Oh no. Oh no. Welp. Welp. Those six weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Scott unexpectedly ended up in film school and partnered with Vera to co-create their very own TV show. It was brought by Notflix, since Notflix will buy anything. Even a crazy TV show co-created by recently graduated high schoolers. Holly graduated from doing lots of... Aya... Ayahuasca? Ayahuasca. And now she appears... That's... I did not know how you spelled that word. Ayahuasca. And now she appears to hallucinating people and acts as their spirit animal. Miranda got a job being a princess of her kingdom, which is actually kind of her job already. Well, you don't see her complaining about it. For those six weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone just like that. The battle for monster prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in the war on youth. But once again... We were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Okay, we can't let the song play. We can't let the song play. We can't let the song... Yes, okay. Five new images. Okay, let's see what we unlocked. Let's see what we unlocked. Okay. We got an... Oh, our rejection. We got our rejection from Vera image. Oh. Okay. What other art? Oh, this was new last time. We have to click on all of them to get the new to go away. I thought it would go away between last games and this game. I mean, that's cool. Some concept art. Okay. Is there more on this one? Yes, there's this page. Oh, that's cute. Oh. Okay. These are nice. Oh, the 3D model. Very cool. Oh, this is pretty neat. Okay. Let's look at some more fan art. Oh, more Damien fan art. Okay. All right. Let's go back. Okay. We had our first failure, you guys. We tried. <clears throat> we tried. We're gonna do another short run. And we're gonna try to get the vampire man. Yep, skip, skip, skip. Yep, we have we've done this. Uh we're gonna be Karen. Okay. R E N. Okay. Okay. Yay. Yes. Yay! Okay. We've seen all this. Huzzah! 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 Yay! Okay, we're going for the nerds, so we're going to go to class every time this time, I think. Yep, quiz time. Quiz time, let's try to pick smarty smart pants answers. What is your soul emoji? The emoji that speaks the truth of your soul. Caucasian guy with a turban because fuck stereotypes. Octopus emoji, best animal on earth. Okay, we've gotten this question before. Snowman because the motherfucker's in the middle of a blizzard, he's fucking smiling, he doesn't even fuck about blizzards, he has a kick-ass hat. Anyway, we're picking octopus. Octopus emoji. The coolest mythological creature. A sphinx who's super turned up and ready to party, and she wraps all of her riddles. She still kills you if you don't answer them correctly, but she wraps the riddles. <laughs> the invisible hand of the free market. This weird creature I drew when I was six, which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures, but it's super cool and it's my OC and my spirit animal, okay? <laughs> We're going with the wrapping sphinx. Okay, wrapping sphinx. Yes. Okay, killer accessory. Um, coolness itself, a fabulous purse, um, necklace with your own name, fancy brass knuckles, sunglasses at night, or shiny armor. I think Vampire Boy would like sunglasses at night, so let's choose that. No, that's Polly. I should have chosen coolness itself. 
Oh well, we will still try to get. Let's let's see if we can get him though. Let's see if we can get let's him. Let's go. Okay, we're gonna go to class every time. That day, you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at high school. Okay, plus two smarts. Fantastic. Later that... Yeah, Paul, we're gonna get Polly. Later you're, later, you're minding your business when you see Polly floating down the hallway texting just as you're about cool. to approach her. There you are, Polly. You've been floating a, the scent... Yeah, you've been following a scent. The scent of betrayal! What are you talking about, buddy? I haven't been pulling any pranks at all today. Mm. Some very unfunny person mentioned mess with my sports gear. They put my left sock in my right shoe. Right sock, left shoe. Polly, I know we're best bros, and you would never do a prank to me. But I think you did this prank to me. I smelled you. Mm -hmm. Um, no, you didn't, because ghosts don't have a scent. Maybe not to a normal person, but a werewolf can smell anything. And ghosts smell like algebra and global warming. Hmm. Right. Well, if ghosts don't smell, then what am I smelling? Of course ghosts smell like ecstasy spiked rose wine and Victoria's seance lingerie. It's sure is a mystery. Hop in my van and we'll go solve it. Scoob, I mean Scott. Let's go solve it, Scooby-Doo. Oh, right in the van? Can I stick my hat out the window? <laughs> um, of course. Anything to distract, I mean, cheer up, my best buddy. You hop in the van to get on the case of the ghost smells. Scott opens a bag of raw bones and begins swallowing them whole. Don't mind me. I just brought some Scott snacks. Zoinks, Scott. Those look delicious. If I could digest uncooked marrow, I totally would. <laughs> but as it is, Polly settles for lighting up a Polly snack and getting the whole fan baked. You round out the day by tearing a, a human's face off to reveal that he was actually a spooky skeleton all along, just as you suspected. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, that was fun. It's nice to let my tongue wag in the breeze. Can we go on another car ride soon, huh? Can Classic. we? Sure, bud. Anytime a prank goes, I mean, anytime you want. The distraction works like a charm and you even got away with it thanks to the lack of meddling kids. Plus two fun and plus one boldest. Okay. Well, we're gonna sit, we're gonna sit with our vampire boy and try to court him i chose the wrong thing to get at my opening scene with him here we go when you arrive at their table you find polly and liam aren't eating and they're just taking pictures of their food oh i think we've seen this one welcome to the don't need to eat so we just take dope food pics zone baby we believe that food like heavy construction machinery should be seen and not tasted yeah i mean have you ever tasted heavy construction machinery have you I don't know, maybe. My weekends are usually kind of a blur, like last Saturday. There will be plenty of time to chronicle your sex exploits later, Polly. Right now, we need to focus on these food pics. While Liam and Polly are busy bantering, you are busy arranging a dope food pic of your own, and now to complete your masterpiece. Um, but instead of food, it's just a bottle. I think this one, because we did this one before, food pick of Liam taking food picks. I think that Liam likes this one. Yes. You level your phone at Liam just as he's about to snap a food pick, but his vampire reflexes are too quick for you. Ha. Trying to out meta the meta master, are you? We'll see about that. Liam levels his phone at Polly just as she's about to take a food pick. Now you're taking a food pick of a food pick of a food pick. Whoa. Are we pointing our phones at each other now? I want to play too. Suddenly, Polly's got her phone pointed at you. It's a food pick of 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 a... We've done it. We've created the meta triangle. The most meta shape in existence. This is our finest hour. The world around you dissolves into green columns of numbers and letters. You've done it. You see the code. You are the one. Holy shit. The programming of the video game you're in awards you by raising your relationship points with the character known as Liam. Fantastic. It was a Matrix reference, too. I love the Matrix. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we're going to class every time. Oh, but we're shopping. We money. only have five money. Hey, last night I read this article on how money causes pocket cancer. Oh, yeah, healthy pockets. Okay, we're too poor for most of this shit. Mm. We bought that. Let's, we have five money, so we should buy something. We're 
we're gonna get... I don't think we bought the sunglasses yet. I'm trying to remember. I know we bought that. I don't think we bought the tape. Okay, let's buy the tape. There we go. You know what? All profits made are donated to a good cause. Spoiler alert, the good cause is buying me a new phone. So neat. I want to date the cat girl. I don't know if you can date the NPCs, but I want to date the cat girl. Okay, we're going to class again. The day? Uh, that day, you're the first one in class. You sometimes come early because you enjoy talking to the teacher. He's a bit bitter, but in a cool way. He treats you like an adult, and the two of you discuss life and stuff in a very snarky way. Look at you, ex ex excelling at cliched movie tropes. You gain plus two smarts and plus one valuable life insight that will help you face the difficulties of being young. The teacher hasn't arrived yet, so everybody's chatting amongst themselves. That totally contradicts the intro, but whatever. Polly and Scott are sitting next to you, and you can't help but overhear their conversation. Masters. All right, I hereby call this meeting of the Prank Masters to order. Prank Master Doll, here. Prank Master Geist, present. Great. Okay, our first order of business: Operation Prank the Teacher. Should we come up with a different name for the operation? Something more secret? No, Scott. That's what they're expecting. Oh, okay. Well, uh, mm, I think we should poop on our desk. Pretty good, but ghosts can't poop and I want to participate. Good point. What else can we do? Oh, uh, Mr. Lestrade is a vampire, right? Why don't we open the blinds so when he comes so when she comes in, she burns to dust? God. Oh boy, that would be such a good prank. That's why we're the prank messers! With a Z. With a Z. Scott and Polly excitedly try to open the blinds, but they won't budge. Seems like Miss Lestrade anticipated this particular prank. Ugh, lame. Well, I'm temporarily out of ideas. Scott? Nothing. Anybody? Anybody. The prank masters are currently accepting applications. You fancy yourself a bit of a prankster, don't you? Why not treat them to one of your amazing prank ideas? Um, tell the teacher she's got something on her face. There's no way for her to check. Quick, become a minister of... Uh, minister and consecrate the room. She won't be able to enter. Let's do this one. This sounds fun. None of you is an ordained minister, but luckily you can do that in 10 minutes on your phone. Yes. You quickly chant some prayers and draw a bunch of crucifixes on the chalkboard, just as Miss Lestrade finally arrives. It turns out vampires can enter a consecrated room. They just burn to ash immediately afterwards. Oh, God. You can't... You wait... As you wait for Crazy Martin the janitor to come clean up the mess, Polly and Scott approach you with a very serious look on their faces. Dude. That was... Totally awesome! You truly are one of the prank masters! You suddenly find yourself fending off high fives and fist bumps from all sides. It's not every day someone successfully murders a teacher. You guess, uh, you gain plus two boldness and plus one charm. <laughs> that could have gone worse. That could have gone worse. Let's go! Let's go! Okay, where is our boy? Here's our boy. You approach Liam and Vera's table to find them thoughtfully tasting several glasses of wine. This school has literally no rules, apparently. Ah, wine, the most exclusive of beverages. Even a vampire such as myself cannot resist its class and allure. Do you know a lot about wine, then? I'm having dinner with the King of France next week, and I could use some pointers. France doesn't have a king anymore. That's what the media wants you to think. So do you know about wine or not? Alas, my centuries of living, I have only learned how to look good holding wine, not how to evaluate it. All I know is that I'm not drinking another glass of that one. Vera points at a bottle with Polly's toilet wine written on it in permanent marker. <sighs> what I wouldn't give for an experienced sommelier to help us judge what wine is best. You know nothing about wine, but you're pretty sure most sommeliers just make stuff up anyway. You suavely recommend. Um, try the sangria. It pairs well with seafood and blood. Um, the tannins in this robust Malbec are an elegant way to mask the taste of poison. Perfect for diplomatic missions. Okay, I guess this is the Vera answer. So let's go with this one. I think this is the Liam answer. Yes. Okay. I, I, get, I get. I guess I understand him a little bit, even though I fucked up the opening scene. You know, the pronounced sweetness and citrus flavors would go well with an unholy blood meal. I've always tried to pair Pinot Noir with blood, you know, because noir means dark, like my soul. And I always avoided sangria because the little bits of fruit in it seem unauthentic. 
but I suppose the clue is in the title, isn't it? This truly is a new dawn for Sanguine Cuisine. Well, not dawn per se, but let's say a new dusk. Yes, a new dusk for Sanguine Cuisine. As someone who does not literally drink blood, I'm afraid I can't share your enthusiasm, but I do like to imagine vampires getting chunks of fruit stuck between their fangs. Liam ignores her. He's too busy gazing at you over the rim of his glass. He's a little drunk, but you don't judge. Getting drunk at lunch. Getting drunk at lunch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <let's> go. <laughs> okay. Class, class, class. Yes. That day, the teacher is just tired of teaching, so she recurs to the classic technique of not giving a shit and putting on some kind of historical TV show for you to watch. What you don't expect is that it's super effective. God bless the golden era of television. The TV show is compelling thanks to the ridiculous amount of nudity and bloodshed. But at the same time, you actually learn a lot about history. You gain plus two smarts. Scott strolls by, happily munching on something. Leah gapes at him, appalled. What on earth are you eating, Scott? <laughs> this delicious new flavor of Fengal's potato chips. Maximum, ultimate, double, barbecue, massacre. Really? Because it looks like a raw severed goat head inside of a cardboard tube. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Could have sworn it was potato chips. Still, tasty though. Tasty? Tasty? Does wonton environmental destruction sound tasty to you? I don't know. Is that a kind of jerky? No, Scott. Don't you realize that in order to harvest these goat heads, Fengals and Co. decapitates millions of innocent goats every year? But what do they do with the bodies of the goats? Nothing. It's a horrendously wasteful practice. Oh no! All those poor headless goat bodies running around and bumping into things! We have to stop them! Wait, really? I was just trying to make you feel guilty. I didn't actually have a plan of action, but if someone were to suggest one... Assemble an army of vengeful undead goat torsos. Write an extremely mean blog post. Let's make an army. Let's make an undead army. Okay, our vampire boy is undead. Maybe he would like this. Okay, so smart. Yes. Ah, yes, necromancy. The ultimate tool in the protester's arsenal. Oh, oh, can I ride a goat? Can I? Huh? Of course you can ride a goat. In fact, given your size, you'll probably need to ride several. What a several? Is that a really big goat? No time to explain basic concepts, Scott. We've got an invasion to orchestrate. As long as you're reanimating things, you reanimate some severed goat heads, too. They'll eat anything, which totally helps you clean your room. Plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Oh, oh. Let's go. Okay, let's go to class. That day, you were astonished by the new stuff you learned in class. You thought high school was all about doing stupid shit with your friends and trying to find true love. Who would have thought that class could actually be useful? What a nice surprise. Uh, plus one valuable lesson and plus two smarts. Okay. You actu you're actually reading the latest issue of Monster Magazine when you are rudely interrupted. See, even Karen, a sensible monster with a good head on her shoulders and at least some smarts is reading Monster Magazine. Yeah, and that's bad because we're warriors, so we need to fight. Scott takes the magazine from you and punches it. Hooray! Let's go solve another one of the world's major problems! No, Scott. We're social justice warriors. You see, Karen, ever since our major success in the Fangle's goat head debacle, we've taken it upon ourselves to stand up against injustice. By punching magazines! No, Scott. As you no doubt noticed, Monster Magazine's sexiest monster alive this year is Count Victor von Musselbod, the werewolf prince slash bodybuilder. That makes him the fifth royal werewolf bodybuilder in a row to earn the title. What about those of us with leaner physiques? What of our representation? So now we're endeavoring to get Monster Magazine to name someone from a more marginalized community as their sexiest creature alive. We just need to figure out a way to convince them since I guess punching the magazine wasn't good enough. Psh, that's easy. All you need to do to solve everyone's body image issues forever is, <laughs> if only, Make our own versions of the magazine fester with three brilliant chupacabras on the cover. Lean heavily into the warrior part. Storm Monster Magazine and hold the editor-in-chief captive until he promises to stop exclusively promoting one aesthetic as the pinnacle of monster sexiness. Um, I guess this is the Scott answer. So let's do this one. Oh, mm, not so creative. Okay, but Liam likes it anyway. Let's see. What a brilliant idea. Three-winged chupacabras are definitely an undeserved, underserved population. Yeah, let's make a magazine. You let your creative juices flow and craft your own version of Monster Magazine. 
Unfortunately, your creative juices just aren't that juicy, and so your version of Monster Magazine is basically a bunch of doodles and pictures from other magazines glued into some paper and poorly stapled. Something isn't working. Maybe it's the fact that your creation is deeply abhorrent. No, it's just that it's missing the cherry on top, a very amateurish fanfic where you meet your favorite band and they hire you as their assistant, and all of you snuggle a lot. And there's some centrification too. Centrification, okay. Now it's perfect. Bruh, I'm not sure about this. This thing looks not great. I think what he means to say is that your magazine is an act of terrorism against good taste. I think we should dismiss this SJW reunion so we can all go bleach our eyes and hopefully unsee this abomination. Bye! Everyone's a critic. You published your magazine, and by publishing it, you mean printing some copies for yourself and trying to steal it. Someone gives you some change thinking you're a delusional homeless person. In the end, it seems Liam isn't the only one who thinks your magazine is an act of terrorism against good taste. The police think the same, and they put you in jail? I went to jail for a bad magazine? The heck? The heck? Let's go. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Lunchtime. You find Damien brandishing his usual silverware, a hammer and a chisel, while Liam looks on in horror. You can't eat that. <laughs> Watch me. First of all, it's made of one seamless piece of obsidian. So it's low calorie. And second of all, it's a licious, liches filigree. Part of a balanced breakfast. It's lunch. You're just jealous. No, I'm nervous. Nervous that you're going to eat that and get possessed by a lich and kill us all. Well, I'm nervous that's not going to happen. Looks like these two are in an impasse. Maybe we can solve the dispute and score some romantic cred at the same time. Damien, don't eat it. You won't have room for all of the baby seals I bought you. Liam's right, Damien. You should make him eat it. Oh no, okay, it's gotta be this one for Liam. Yeah, okay. Baby seals, give them to me. I can already taste the cruelty. Karen, you scoundrel, how could you substitute one tawny responsibility for animal cruelty? You quietly explain to Liam that the baby seals you're feeding to Damien aren't really baby seals. Hey, these are just seal-shaped beanie babies stuffed with tofu and pig's blood. <laughs> Good thing you always keep a sack of baby seal decoys in case of killer whale attack. I applaud your craftiness and your high regard for animal life. Let's go return this phylacree to Larry the Lich's crypt, together. It ends up being the third most romantic night you've ever spent in a crypt. Score! Okay. Let's go! Class, class, class. Get the class run. Okay, we got that achievement. That day, your teacher delivers an amazing and creative performance that blows all your minds. It ends up being a sensation on YouTube. Your teacher gains plus 10 coolness, but who cares? He's not trying to romance your classmates, or is he? We hope not. Oh, you also gain plus two smarts. Hooray! Afterwards, Liam walks up to you extremely nonchalantly. It's ridiculous how little he cares about his walk. After considerable thought, I've come to the conclusion that you are not a complete poser. And seeing as I could use a partner for my tragically hip late night excursions, consider yourself invited. Tonight, 3 a.m., I'm sure you'll have no trouble coming up with an appropriately underground destination. I mean, it's not like I don't know any cool places to go or anything. I just want to give you an opportunity to prove yourself. Liam vanishes in a cloud of mist and angst. You've got 12 hours to choose the trendiest spot nobody's ever heard of. Monstropolis, the most exclusive new nightclub. The hottest, most underground nightclub of all the Earth's core. I bet Liam can't go to the Earth's core. I just, I just have a feeling a vampire can't go there. It's not the sun, but I just, I just have a feeling. We're gonna go to Star. You call Liam and tell him to meet you at Asterix. You want me to meet you where? Asterix. You patiently explain to him that it's pronounced Asterix. It's pronounced Asterix. <laughs> star. Star? Are you saying star? You gently correct his pronunciation once again. Sphincter? Is that how you pronounced it? You tell him there's no reason to be crude about it. You know what, whatever. I don't want to go to your stupid club anyway, asshole. <gasps> Liam hangs up. It's a shame. Asshole was pretty close to the predict correct pronunciation. No, I guess I was supposed to pick the core of the earth. Ooh. Okay, let's try it. Are we going to get rejected twice? 
Are we going to get rejected twice? There is an achievement for getting rejected by everybody, but there's also an achievement for dating everybody, so. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see. You finally pluck up the courage to ask your beloved to monster prom with you. You and me? Psh, that'd be so predictable. Don't be a fool. Also, right now I only date blue and animate objects. Don't harass me with your narrow-minded and please respect my sexual preferences. <gasps> we got two failures tonight, you guys. The shame of your constant failures was so great that you secluded yourself in your room for years and officially started dating on your pillow. Waifu life forever. Old pond, a frog jumps in, the sound of water. Oh my God. <gasps> oh no. Okay. Okay. So this run, okay, total runs, okay. This doesn't make sense though, because I've definitely had more endings than this. All right, those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened and it was wonderful. Liam kept doing art so hard that he eventually evaporated and became the concept of coolness itself. And he left the physical plane. The last thing Liam did was give everyone a condescending look. Thanks, Liam. Vera realized she was a character in a video game, which infuriated her. She spent her life making connections and building power because she's not part of the game. She plays the game. So be careful. Maybe she's now the one pulling your strings. Damien loved fire to the very end. Unfortunately, that wasn't a super legal affair and he ended up in prison for arson. Fortunately, prison was flammable. For those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in the war called Youth. But once again, we were young, and we were unafraid, and we were ready to start. Okay, okay, stop before the song goes. Okay, seven new images in the gallery. Okay, let's go to the gallery. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is our Liam rejection. Ah, so sad. So sad. We do need to get all the rejections, too. What new arts do we got here? Oh, some more of these. Okay. Some Amira concepts. Fan arts. There's a lot of Damien fan arts. A lot, a lot of Damien fan arts. Oh my gosh. Someone's gonna die. Of oh, fun! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. This game is still freaking amazing. We got, we got some good, uh... We got some good achievements. I did see an achievement pop up, although I didn't know the name of it. I'm gonna open Steam so I can find out what we got. Let's see. Where's my steam? I saw another achievement come up. Epic loser. Okay, so epic loser is being rejected. Hey, no worries, Rar, no worries, Rar. Okay, so we got this time um, Tiger. Oh, we got Tiger Millionaire by ending with 20 money. I didn't notice that one. We also got Bookworm for doing the library, Epic Loser for being rejected, and Nerd for going to class all terms. So yeah, we lost for Liam too. We lost for Liam too. We tried to do a short three week run, but we did not, it did not go so well. But that's okay because you do, there is uh, achievements for getting rejected by everybody as well as dating everybody. So yeah, um, we are still working on it. We're still working on it. So yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Let's see. Where can I see? Yeah, so achievements we've gotten so far. We've gotten true to yourself, where we cor chose correctly every time. Um, we got one secret ending. We got Casanova that was getting a date to prom. That small bladder for getting bathrooms every time. Funeral, that was... um. The secret ending, we bought the tampon, so we got an achievement for that. Library all turns, Tiger Millionaire, class all turns, and then Epic Loser for being rejected. It is super tragic, but uh, it's okay, it's okay. So we still got to try to date Liam and Vera, and we never officially took um, Miranda to prom either. So we've still got those three. So next week, we can try for one of those three. 
So we will still be playing more Monster Prom next week. We're doing it blind. I, I don't know anything about this game other than the Steam Achievements list. So that's kind of what we're going for to try to kind of like, you know, have some um, have some goals in the game. But uh, but yeah, I uh, otherwise I don't know. I don't really know how this game works other than what I have learned from playing it. All right. I wonder if enough air has fallen out. Air bubbles have risen to the top of this slime. I can put the rest in there. Get off of there. It's very air bubbly. It's very air bubbly. Look at, how, look at how many air bubbles. Oh my gosh. Okay. Try to put the little bit left in there. I don't know. I just really want all of it to fit into one container, but I don't know if it's going to. I might just throw like a little bit away because I don't want like a little bit in a different container. I think that's silly. Yeah, it's not going to fit. <laughs> not enough air bubbles rose to the top. Oops. Yeah, it's still it's still like the lid won't go down. Ooh, stick to the lid. <laughs> All right, you guys, I was telling you guys about how the the raid train that pushed me over the 300. I want to go see if one of those guys is live, if I can tell if one of the raid train peoples is live. <laughs> Let's see. What's this person? Are they, are they live? Oh no, they're streaming to discord. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to tell if one of these guys is live. They don't really have a like live channel. Let's see if anybody posted their link recently as live. Oh, someone's playing Stardew, they said. Let's see about this person. Yes. Okay. While that's loading up and we're getting through the ad. Let's do our little, let's do our outro. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the show at the theater. Um, you can find me in all of these places. You can find me right here on Twitch. We stream on Thursdays, 6.30 to 8.30. This is all Eastern time. Um, I stream by myself there. We do games with uh, good stories and things like that, uh, cozy games. And on Saturday, we stream Interstage Window. So that is uh, mostly podcast style. That is also where we do community days. Basically, that's my stream with my friends. And we have a very, very, very special stream on Saturday. So Saturday, noon to two, be there. We're doing, I'm doing a shout out. Okay, we're having Moisty. Moisty actually does um, content creation for his, his day job, okay? And he's going to talk to us about it. He's going to talk to us about what it means to be a content creator and um, and kind of how that all goes. I'm just double checking, making sure I spell his name right. If you're not following Moisty, you need to be following Moisty. He is fantastic. I was about to spell his name wrong. Let's go make sure I spell it right. I'll give you all a link. There we go. Okay. There we go. Shout out for Moisty. Please go follow him. He's going to be um, coming on the stream on Saturday. It's going to be super, super fun. Um, also, you want to follow my Twitch if you want all the um, my Twitch, my Twitch. Well, of course you want to follow my Twitch, but you want to follow my Twitter to get all the latest updates on what's going on with my stream. That's where I'm posting like uh, what the streams are going to be and all kinds of updates like that. If you want to make sure that you get good notifications, you want to join my Discord because I can control the notifications in there, unlike on Twitch and YouTube, which you cannot trust to always give you your notifications. So you want to do that as well. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and do a raid. We're going to raid the Bulba Boy. He is streaming Stardew. This is a new friend. They're part of that raid train. So we're going to go, we're going to go raid them. Um, and I know that we're going to love them because they clearly like Pokemon. They clearly like Pokemon. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and as always, of course, don't forget to make it a great day.